this, that we're actually doing very good. You know, I've read the emails of terrorists, right? Uh, I've seen what they're doing. I know how they work. Uh, I know how it works for, for hackers and things like that, because that was actually part of, of, of specificity. Um, and the thing that gives me hope is the fact that terrorists really aren't that bright. Um, by and large, we see this. You know, there have been concerns by the director of the FBI and whatnot that, oh my goodness, you know, terrorists are going to start using encryption. Well, hey, boy, look, terrorists are already using encryption. Everyone in the room is already using encryption. Every time you go to your bank's website, you are using encryption. Every time you order something on Amazon.com, you are using encryption. Uh, they said, for example, the Paris attackers had WhatsApp or Telegram installed on the phone. Uh, Telegram, by the way, is not very secure. Um, so that, that's not something that I would really I would say it reflects positively on their, their terms of operational sophistication. But despite this, despite the fact that they did have, uh, let's presume, assuming these statements are accurate, we're getting them from anonymous officials, so we don't know that's the case, but let's presume that were the case. We also know that the police recovered an unencrypted signal. Uh, we also know that the attackers made unencrypted calls, they sent unencrypted text messages, and these allow the police to find their safe house a few days later and bust additional cells, and so on and so forth. Uh, the director of national intelligence, the same one who lied in front of Congress, uh, some years after uh, sort of the initial revelations, uh, when people were asking, you know, did this inevitably and, and sort of irrevocably damage the NSA and our ability to track terrorists, uh, he sort of hemmed and hawed and then eventually admitted Terrorists have to communicate, right? They will make mistakes, and we will be there. And having worked at the NSA, I can tell you that's absolutely the case, right? If terrorists stop communicating, if they stop using electronic methods of communication, if they go to, you know, carrier pigeons or sending couriers on bikes, we've actually won a tremendous victory because we have cut their efficiency to the bone. We have completely shattered their ability reach beyond borders because they're afraid of us. That's a good thing. That's a win. That's not a defeat. Edward, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna let me Okay, wrap, wrap up and I'm, let me let me just finish this thought. I, I, I apologize. Uh, I, I hope we don't go too far. Um but when you look at twenty fifteen, right? Twenty fifteen had some problems. Nobody's nobody's gonna say twenty fifteen was a, a perfect year. At the same time twenty fifteen was the best year for humanity that we have ever had. When you look at any metric uh, in terms of mortality, in terms of health care, in terms of quality of life, uh, we are improving at rates that we've never had before. Uh, life is getting better. The difference is whenever anything bad happens in any corner of the world, it comes in every private home by the end of the day. Because we are so connected, we see every grief. We see every horrific uh, incident. We see every atrocity. But again, this is not just a bad thing because it allows us to focus, allows us to try to remediate, allows us to try to deal with it. But at the end of the day, you know, we've got all of these intelligence officials who go, oh my gosh, terrorism, terrorism, be afraid. We should be vigilant.